Well, I'm excited today to talk to Miriam Ben Shalom, who's one of my heroes, who has been doing some wonderful work and kind of really pointing out the, the absurdity of having men um, compete against women in women's sports. So can you just tell us what you've been doing, Miriam? Well, here in Wisconsin, I worked with a group of women uh, out of Madison, especially Thistle uh, Pedersen. Um, we did a billboard that was on 16th and Greenfield, which is a very Hispanic and, and conservative neighborhood. And um, we also did a TV ad, which showed multiple times on a Madison TV station. Um, I was waiting for the tsunami to hit, and it didn't. Um, so you haven't been, you haven't had it taken off, you haven't had it taken off the air, you haven't had pushback? No, no, no nothing no. happened. Nobody no. threatened us, nobody got nasty with us. Uh, I, I was surprised, to be very honest, um, but there you go. On the other hand, it was the dead of winter, um, the day we did the, the, uh, the TV ad, it was 15 degrees below zero. <laughs> We were outside. Oh. So I looked like I have a Yashanka on. And <laughs> so maybe it was just too cold for those poor souls to come and protest. On the other hand, it's possible people are waking up and realizing the absurdity of this. I just watched a video with um, Rachel McKinnon, I think is the name, at, going by Ivy something now. And, and this guy is sitting there, you know, looking so male and being like, yeah, our genitals don't make us male or female. It's our feelings. And I'm like, you know, this is ridiculous. I've seen an image of him. I'm going to call him him because he's a him sitting there man spreading. <laughs> you know, he's got shorts on and he's just man spread like the manliest man I've ever seen. Yeah. And I said, I, I've never seen a woman sit that way. No. Never. No. Yeah. Well, women don't. No. And Oh, you there there's also one test that that i think people don't understand which i find interesting throw something at a woman for her to catch like a ball or whatever she'll close her legs men do the exact opposite and it's an instinctual thing there is a biological difference surprise surprise right well even when they had an image of him driving and even driving his legs were wide apart his arm was up you know his stance was, you know, and, and he was making the claim that <clears throat> the only difference between he and women were, were socialization and upbringing. And I want to post a picture of a lion and a lioness and say, you know, are these change, are these differences due to socialization and upbringing? I mean, it's just so obvious that these, that, you know, there are these biological differences. And the fact that so many of these guys want to keep their uh, genitalia is so interesting to me. It's like they're trying to make this claim that that the only thing that makes a woman a woman is is the proclamation that she is a woman. <laughs> I heard somebody somebody recently told me that if you shaved all of people's hair, head hair, body hair, shaved it all, and put the same clothes on us, you would not be able to tell. <laughs> you you know it. it, it the absurdity of these people is just breathtaking. Um, I'm sure that things are changing because there are quite a few states now that are moving to uh, limit participation in sports to one's biological um, being as opposed to gender identity, which I think is a fair thing. Um, in, in, I've listened to some of the testimony in front of uh, a Congress. And, you know, I felt sorry for that father who was saying, you know, let his daughter, you know, I wish somebody would have said to him, why didn't you just accept your son for the gay man he is? Yeah. Well, you know? and it's interesting too, because nobody's preventing him from participating. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. not, he can go. Mm -hmm. There are, there are, there's also mixed sports, intramural sports. Mm -hmm don't need to, to take over women's sports or why don't they have the courage of their convictions to stand up and do something just for them like women did just for us mm -hmm. that's because they're lazy nincompoops <laughs> yeah they just aren't and I was curious like how did this idea come to you to, to get the billboard and the tv ad what sort of what was the process that you went through well we it, it was 
we knew that the so-called Equality Act was coming up and we knew that were it to actually pass whole and complete that it would eviscerate women's sports, that there would be no more women's sports per se. So we decided to, to, to attack that particular portion of the Equality Act because so many young women who are talented in the sports area are gonna be denied scholarships, participation, uh, awards, you know, what, whatever it may be. And we thought it was a good place to start because most people can probably see the logic of saying, well, you might identify as a woman, but you're still biologically a male and you have male, uh, a larger male body, more musculature. Um, and we figured logically it was a good place to start. It's something that was easy for people to understand. Yeah, and I think that that's, I think that that's where I, I almost feel like they're overplaying their hand here because it is so obvious when you see, um, you know, just physically, you know, if you put me next to almost any other guy, it's going to be really obvious that we have, you know, significant differences. Um, you know, our shoulders are sloped, our, ho our hips are different. Um, we have less blood. And, and, you know, there are now studies coming out by transgender activists showing that even if, if these guys are on puberty, um, testosterone suppressors and estrogen for a year, they still maintain that advantage. That advantage isn't going to go away because they have the um, skeletal structure. They have the bigger heart, the bigger um, yes, lungs. I mean, there, there are differences no matter what anybody says. I mean, you, you can say you're purple and green with orange polka dots, but that doesn't make it so. Right. And I, I, think about, I think about like my son, my son is right now, he's 17, he's six foot four. But when he was about 13 was when he passed my height. I'm five, seven. And he was about 13, 14. When he passed my height, I will say clearly and loudly, I still outweighed him by 40 pounds, but he was faster and stronger than I was. I tried to play a little soccer with him, went circles around me. I mean, he could lift me, even though I was heavier than him. He's a boy, he's got physical advantages. Yeah, I really noticed that with my kids too. That just the um, the profound difference. My my daughter, my my son is um, eighteen months younger than my daughter, and so they're very close in age. And you know, for the first maybe like ten years, they were pretty close. But as soon as puberty hit, boy, he just left her in the dust. And he wasn't a big kid, but he started developing that strength that boys have. Um, you know, that, uh, and, and the, the capacity to lift, like you said, especially in the, in the, in the sports that require strength, the boys just are going to run rickshaw. And I just saw a video. Um, I think it was talking about, um, I can't remember the exact circumstance, but the, the woman was talking about how she held a record, um, in a sport and her 15 year old son had, was already close to overturning that. Um, and so I think just recognizing the reason that we have women's sports is because of these um, um, really non-deniable differences. Well, that's true. And it's also a way for women to learn how to develop the strength that they can have if they wish. Right. I mean, title... Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think that's sometimes overlooked the importance of, you know, even if they're not going to be champions, just being able to participate on a relatively even field. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I grew up uh, during the time of three bounce basketball for girls. Um, and I wish that I had had uh, the opportunity to engage in some of the, the sports that um, young women have the chance to do nowadays. Um, it took a lot to find out that I could be strong, but it, it, this just angers me because it's one more thing that men are trying to take away from women. And it, it's like, why do they think they need to have everything? Why do they have to take it away? And the other thing that concerns me about their participation at, um, you know, trying to claim womanhood is that, is that they also are infiltrating the locker rooms and the facilities that have specifically been designated for women. Well, absolutely. I mean, young women, I remember what it was like when I got my first period, you know, it was like, oh dear God, what is this? <laughs> young, young, young women 
go through so many changes as probably do young men, although I don't know what, how they deal with their changes. Um, they don't need some bozo in the locker room doing whatever it is he thinks he's supposed to do. Um, he has no place there. You know, girls need privacy. They need to learn. They need to talk to other girls. They need to deal with the changes their bodies are going in, are, are going through right then and there. Um, no, no boy, no male can ever cope with that. It's, it's just not part of their growing up process, just like no girl could ever cope with whatever it is that boys go through. Right. And it, it's ridiculous. I, I just think that most of these young men who say they're women um, and, and are getting into athletics are doing it for attention and to garner some awards. Uh, I, I bet you in five years, they don't say they're women anymore. Interesting. Seven years, I'd bet you. And if that happens, you know, you know, say Jane Doe reverts to being back to Joe Doe, they ought to take away every one of his awards, every one of his medals, everything else, and void it. But they're not doing that now. I mean, you look at these actors and actresses who are claiming to have been, you know, transgender all their lives, and the whole dead name, I'm getting off subject here, but the way they try to claim that they never were that person, that name is dead. I want to say, okay, that's fine, but we're going to we're going to take away your degree. We're going to take away your awards. Anything that was under that name that you just got rid of goes with you. I, I agree that, you know, if, if you're either in or out. Well, especially for things that are sex based categories, like best, you know, female actor. Well, if you're if you're suddenly a male, then you know, no longer, a, you know, if we're going to play by these rules, let's really apply them. Um, let's see how they like it if we really apply these rules. Um, but again, I, I am for rejecting it all because it's just to me, it's absurd. The absurdity of it sometimes just you know, strikes me as beyond fathoming, really. It's like that we are to the point where the only thing a man has to do is to claim to be a woman and suddenly we're going to embrace that man as a woman. How did society get here, Miriam? I don't, <laughs> I am just so dumbfounded by it. I don't, I don't know. Um, I really don't understand it. Um, <sighs> I mean, I never thought that the liberal left would 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 go to such insane lengths. Mm -hmm. I I really don't know. I, the only thing that I can think of is the fact that women have not been much valued in society, no matter anyway. I mean, even in the LGB community, you you saw a lot of things going for gay men, uh, not nothing much at all for bisexual people, and and very little for lesbians. And I don't know whether this is playing off that. What I don't understand though, is since women are really quite literally to use a, a transgender phrase, the most marginalized group on the face of the earth, why these guys want to be women? I don't get it. It's almost, it's almost like they can't stand that, that like for some reason there might be special supports in place for women in refugee camps. Or there might be, you know, somewhere where they're not allowed. It just seems like it drives them absolutely bonkers. And it's very predatory. It's very predatory. And I think about the statistics with pornography. Mm -hmm. Something like 98% of men, you know, admit to using pornography and the other 2% are probably lying. And, and so we're going to let these guys come into the locker rooms, come in with our daughters and with us when we know that they're that they're interested in seeing naked women mm -hmm. and i think about a boy when i was in middle school there was a boy in my school who he was so proud of himself that he could pop girls bras open by walking up behind him he'd walk up behind you twist your bra strap and pop it open yep. oh and everybody just thought it was so funny and the teachers were like oh just ignore him just ignore him how many times i heard just ignore him well now i'm hearing that oh there's a guy in your bathroom exposing himself just ignore him yeah. No, I'm tired of ignoring it. Well, and the other thing is, is that I hear all the time is that, um, you know, these, these poor, these poor guys who feel like women, they're, they're at higher risk, we have to feel sorry for them. And yet, 
insinuating themselves into women's spaces is, is inherently predatory. Um, trying to say you're a woman in order to access women's sports, that's inherently predatory. So maybe they're not going to rape or you know assault us, but their very behavior, as you said, is predatory. It's, um, it, you know, we're saying no, and our consent is being um, called now bigoted. Our very ability to say no is now being called hate speech. That, that's true. And it, it just goes to show how much value is placed upon women's lives and children's lives. And I've oftentimes wondered, you know, why it is that women and children are held so cheaply. It, it, it stupefies me. There would be no men were there no women. Um, and now they're actually trying to appropriate our uteruses women because there's parthenogenesis yeah um and but i they, the, the newest push that i'm hearing is they're they're trying to uterine transplant so that they can now be in charge of reproduction which is just you know it's disgusting to me that that they're that they're so threatened and maybe that's it miriam that they know on some level that you know women um, can, can create other human beings without men. You know, we can, you know, there is the technology now we could do that. There's no way that a man can create another human life without a woman. Well, where do they get the uterus from? Right. And furthermore, it, it's not just a uterus and a vagina. It has to do with hormones and the whole body. It takes the whole body of a woman to, to, gestate and birth a, a, a baby or a fetus. Yeah. It, it affects it affects every part of your body. Yep. It affects your eyes. It affects your hair. Yes. Every yeah. part of it. Yeah. Well, and it's it's interesting because I was just listening to something that was talking about. Pardon? Wonder where these doctors are coming from. They have MDs. Where did they get them? Sears Roebuck? Yeah. Well, and again, what is the motivation behind this and why has it garnered so much um, support? And you mentioned, Miriam, from the left, that the left has sort of bought into this. And I'm reading a number of books about the environment right now. And I am just confounded as to how the left is embracing something which is putting an artificial hormone, um, steroids, comp contro a controlled substance in the case of testosterone into these girls totally bolstering big pharma and and damaging the environment as well as the children these are the same people who you know are out there saying you know we we don't want children using plastic water bottles because of the you know possible negative impacts of it we want them to have healthy milk without growth hormones in it you know these are the same people advocating for for healthy children and yet they're fully embracing this idea of of giving kids you know, inducing developmental delays, giving them hormones that are so damaging, um, both to that child, but also to the environment. Well, it's kind of backdoor experimentation on, on children mm -hmm. because big pharma dare not run experimental trials because that would be illegal. Right. It's literally be doing experimenting on living human beings. So this is kind of a hush, hush, wink, wink, nod, nod experimentation. And they have no idea what, what the side effects are going to be. I, I, I tell you that in 20 years, we're going to be, well, society will be dealing with the horror of what has gone on. Yeah. I, I have compassion. I, I do. But I also, you know, have to say, what is wrong with people today? You know, you, you don't want uh, pollution in, 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 in water. Well, why are you allowing this? You don't want kids to eat beef or drink milk that where there was growth hormones well what do you think puberty block blockers do you know and it's just and nobody knows so yeah, there's this knows. back door sort of like undercover covert experimentation going on and i don't know why people don't see it it is it's so confusing and we do know some of the effects i mean lupron has well documented adverse effects for adult women who've taken it. Severe, debilitating effects. And this is in adult women. And they're giving them to children now. And we talk to detransitioners who they talk about some of the things that have happened to their bodies as a result of this. Um, I think you're right on, Miriam. This is an experiment. This is a human experiment. 
Yeah, and there's no way they could have gotten it approved any other way. So they're, I think you're, you know, this backdoor way. The other thing that I see is that Big Pharma has a way of, you know, if they have a drug that, that is expensive and they want to use it, they find ways to insinuate it. Um, and so, you know, Lupron, which was originally used to chemically castrate sex offenders, and then they tried using it, you know, on women with endometriosis and had horrible outcomes. Now they're like, well, let's try it here. And the other, the, the bonus to, to big pharma is now they're finding that um, puberty blockers suppress growth, which isn't at all surprising. So now these kids have to take growth hormones. Um, and so it's- And then who provides those? Who, who provides, provides those? those? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and these are the same parents who would be up in arms if somebody were putting growth hormones in their food at school. I mean, it's just, it's so confusing. Genetically modified corn or wheat or whatever. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like the efforts that you, that you made in Wisconsin have had an impact? Or do you think that that's a state that's going to in, be interested in introducing legislation to require um, people to, you know, to compete in sports of their biological sex? I don't know. Um, there's a big tumult going on right now between the, the Democratic governor and the Re Republican run legislature. Um, right now, the big deal is COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the Republicans want to open up the bars and the restaurants and, and, and everything else. Whereas our governor is saying, wear a mask you know, be careful, don't do large groups. And so there's this big argument going on right now because our COVID rate is dropping dramatically. But then again, we've had pretty rigorous lockdown measures here. Um, I, I'm hoping that maybe something will come up. I'd like to, to write to my representatives and say, I'd like you to introduce legislation like this because we do have some pretty good sports teams here Wisconsin, the Badgers are, are, are a big deal, you know, and I would hate to see the Lady Badgers, Lady Badgers, you know, have to deal with some of these uh, transgender males, these males who say they're transgender, excuse me, uh, play on their teams, you know, uh, it, it just, so we will see what happens come later this spring if COVID continues to drop and, and it looks like there's a window, window of opportunity. Yeah, and that, that I think is gonna be um, interesting to think how, see how things progress. One other concern that I have is that um, I'm seeing more and more parents who claim, to, who claim their children are transgender, really little children, like four, five, six, seven years old, who are actually having their birth certificates changed. Um, and so, you know, trying to even figure out now if a child is a is a boy or girl when they're in elementary school, um, it's just going to. I mean, it just puts it, it puts us all in a position of craziness when when you know a child from a state where they allowed a birth certificate to be changed at the age of say five goes to another state where they don't recognize you know that that when they don't accept the absurdity that a boy can be born in the wrong body or a girl can be born in the wrong body, then this child really becomes a victim of the system, I think, and a victim of their parents' um, activism. Well, I don't like to blame parents, but in some cases, I think it's, it's time to take some of these parents to task, whether it's Munchausen by proxy or they didn't want a gay child you know, because of their beliefs, whatever those beliefs may be, these parents need to be taken to task and, and held up to scrutiny. I, I'm not necessarily comfortable with saying that all the time, but, you know, what kind of parent says, you know, of a three-year-old or a four-year-old, oh, this child is transgender. It has to be narcissistic personality disorder or Munchausen by proxy. I mean, what is wrong with such people? It's yeah, they're almost uh, they're it's no up. mandated, you know, <laughs> care, you know, therapy. And I'm not talking about stuff like Exodus, that kind of uh, no. therapy, but talk therapy, you know, rigorous talk therapy and involving healthcare professionals. I mean, doesn't it, anybody care about it, the child? It's almost the, it's almost the celebrity has, you know, as soon as you have a trans child, you're a celebrity because that child is brave and stunning. And, you know, families have created family businesses around a trans child like Jazz Jennings. 
And, and to be fair too, I know so many parents who've gone to experts, whether it's the school principal, it's the, it's the psychiatrist, it's the pediatrician and said, my child says they're the opposite sex. What do I do? And they're all told you have to accept, you have to affirm that you have to affirm it. It, it takes a strong person to stand up and swim upstream. I'm not given carte blanche pass to these parents because there are a lot who I think are just doing it for the celebrity and the notoriety, but a lot have just been out and out lied to from every quarter and they don't know better. And one of the things that I, I wish um, medical people and healthcare professionals would do where you are not buying into the trans balderdash, why do they not start forming a series of clinics um, why do they not publicly stand up and, and take a stand and make sure that, okay, if, if you think this is the case, here's a clinic, here's a, where, a place where you can go, go and get, you know, neutral assistance, neutral therapy. Um, there's only a couple of people, well, Michelle Cretella and Hughes that are standing up. I'm sure there are other healthcare professionals who would like to do so, but they think they're alone. Well, in unity, there is strength. And I suggested a long time to Michelle Cretella, Dr. Cretella, that she ought to form an organization of gender critical medical people and healthcare professionals. Well, I know she's been busy and she didn't do it. And I don't have the capability because I'm not a medical person, but it ought to be done. I think this is a lot like going into battle. The people on the front line know a lot of them are going to get shot when they go into battle and nobody wants to be on the front line. I think that's really astute, Maria. And I know I've talked to healthcare professionals who know this is wrong, but they're afraid to say anything of what because of what will happen. And maybe we can end by talking about what happens when people are scared silent and they are unwilling to stand up for our children when they're unwilling to stand up for what they know is wrong. Where does that lead us? Well, my question is, is if you know healthcare professionals and Dr. Catella knows healthcare and Maria, you know, that's more than one or two people, correct? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot. Well, yeah. There, but there is strength. Yep. If you could get 50 people, 100 people, you know, doctors, healthcare professionals to stand up together, mm -hmm. then the idea of being the first one on the line and getting shot down is no longer relevant. Right. Okay. I also feel like you have to be willing to be that first person shot. This is so important. This is our children. You yes. know, this is their children. If, if our children aren't worthy of standing up for, then what is? It, 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 I, okay, look, I, I would like you and like Maria, I was one of the first people standing up in the front line. Look, I'm still standing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think that's important. Your life might change. My life definitely changed. Um, I lost some very important people in my life, but I also gained you and Maria, some beautiful sisters. Um, <laughs> and so I think people need to um, need to realize that that yes, your life is going to change if you stand up and you speak out, but it doesn't mean your life is over. It means it's gonna be different and you're gonna be able to sleep at night in a way that those who aren't standing up who know it's wrong aren't. I think about people who who look back at like slavery in the United States, look back at the genocide of the Jews during the Holocaust and say, how could that have happened? If I'd been there, I never would have let that happen. What's well, happening now? It's happening now to our children. And if you think you are someone who would have stood up back then, then you need to stand up right now or admit that you're not or admit that you would have let it happen. I, I say I say that very same thing. I look at what's going on right now and I feel like the, the ghost of Joseph Mengele has mm -hmm. come back to haunt us all. Yes. Um, Mengele did medical vivisection uh, experiments uh, on Jews and, and, and Roma people and, and others, but still. And it's one of the reasons I stand up and fight is because there are 6 million of my people looking at me saying, nobody stood up and spoke on our behalf how dare you engage in silence? I mean, I just got called an old hag this morning and was told that trans people would come and piss on my grave. 
well, you know, I'm going to be dead, so I don't care. Yeah. You know, what may- what, what a stupid threat anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're that just infuriates me when they when they say things like that. You know, this is this is just bullying. And we can stand up to bullies. We have to stand up to bullies. You know, I mean, like I don't know what they think that I'm going to be, oh, I'm scared, you know, well, I'm not a afraid he can't. And, you know, this, this bozo who said all these terrible things, he said, oh, go shut up. And I said, try and make me. Yeah. Try and make me. The fact is, is they, they believe and they rely on the idea that people are going to get scared if they threaten or whatever. Mm-hmm. Never has any one of these anencephalic adulpates taken me up when I said, okay, bring it on. When, mm-hmm. when rock and roll, let's do it. And that's because they don't know how to deal with somebody who says, no, you're not going to do this to me. I'm not afraid of you anymore. And people need to realize that. Mm-hmm. It's important. Look, in, 19, in, in 2017, I spoke at a, at a gender conference in Madrid, Spain. I was told directly by the producers of that conference that the trans community decided not to do anything because they were afraid that I, a 68 year old woman was going to do something well damn right i would have done something (laughs) wise not not to pick it and the more people stand up to these these individuals and say really bring it on yeah you know they will stop because they don't know how to how to deal with somebody who says -uh, not on my watch yeah you know, and it, it's, we don't, we need to stop being nice. Yeah. And we need to stop just, just letting it happen. We need to start calling it what it is, which is bullying and, and stand up to it. You know, it, it's just, I, I, I wish that Congress could see some of the things that some of these people have said to you, to Maria, to me, to other people, to Kaylee Triller Harms, you know, the rottenness. I mean, these are the people you want in your daughter's uh, locker room. Right. In your daughter's sport. Yeah. When when their when their um go to retort is to suck my girl dick. Yeah. I mean that's or Talk choke about- on it or choke on it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. To me that that just is really an illustration of of where this movement is coming from. It's all out there. We've written this stuff up. We've written about it. We talk about it. The people who are in positions of making laws don't want to see it. Yeah. They don't want to know. They don't want to, to see it. Yeah. You know, they, they, they need to be made to see it. They may not want to, but they will be made to do it. If only we have the will to make them do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they are elected representatives. They represent you. They represent me. They represent Eric. And too bad if they don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. Time now for them to, to grow up, put on their big person pants, and, and realize what's going on. Yeah, and that's that's the key. I've heard so many policymakers, and they're like, we just don't want to deal with this. Well, you have to. You yes. Have to deal with this because it's hurting women and children, um, and it's hurting our society as a whole. Yes. So, Miriam, do you have any future um, plans for activism, or are you just sort of waiting to see what comes up in the spring with with um, hopefully with COVID resolving? And I uh, work with the Hands Across the Aisle Women in Coalition. I work with the uh, Compassion Coalition and PC. Partners for Ethical Care. (laughs) So it isn't as if Wisconsin is my only domain. I I write, I respond, I'm working on an article right now. Um, There was a uh, series on public television called The uh, Dictator's Playbook. And in watching that, it was like this big epiphany happened to me. It's sort of like what dictators do is suppress speech, mm-hmm. uh, arrest, um, they silence dissent, mm-hmm. uh, they do propaganda, you know, bigotry, all this. Well, this is what the transgender advocates um, and the community is doing. And so I want to compare them to people like Franco, like uh, Hitler, uh, although Hitler has been a bit overdone. Um, Stalin. Hot. And yeah. some other dictators because they are doing the exact same thing and i wish people would understand that and the problem is with with that kind of um dictatorship with that kind of um silencing if people don't stand up 
soon. It's going to be too late. Yeah, I, I talk to people all the time who are just shocked <laughs> at how quickly our, our free speech has gone away. I mean, we just can't say things. We're not allowed to say things that that we should be allowed to say because that's part of that's one of the foundations of our country is free speech and freedom of conscience and and that, that has just gone away so quickly with this ideology well i was enraged this morning um i got a little notation as one of the administrators for um compassion coalition that facebook had removed a couple of things well i went and saw and i copied what it was they removed i'm going to publish it elsewhere okay. Yes, please do. <laughs> we need to see what that is and 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 raise awareness because again, um, there's this idea that you know dead naming or mispronouncing or using correct pronouns on someone um, is 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 hate speech now. Which you know if if that is considered hate speech, then then that's incredibly concerning. Um, so now telling the truth is considered hate speech. Yeah, well, I'm going to continue I, I, and speak up as long as I am physically able to do so. One of the things that I truly wish that that could be done, and I'm not sure how to go about doing it again, it's just an idea, is to develop a war chest. Mm -hmm. um, if a million women donated a dollar, that'd be a million dollars. And get people like you, Aaron, like you, Maria, even me or or Kaylee or you know other gender critical people, get them out and across the country to speak, whether in a church, whether in an auditorium, any place where there will be a venue where they can civilly present our case. I think that would be the way to go because mainstream media isn't going to do it, but mainstream media will pay attention if a bunch of uh, guys and dresses show up carrying on like strange individuals and that might be one way to do it yeah it, it's it's hard to get the word out though when there's like you're here maria is someplace else i'm in wisconsin kaylee kaylee is where she is and in, in Coeur d'Alene. um well and that's something that um that partners for ethical care is trying to do and, and we need a, a traveling road show is basically. Yeah, and, and anybody watching this who's interested, um, Partners for Ethical Care is actively trying to connect people now because we recognize, um, you know, it's really hard for one person to go out there and face a crowd of hateful people, of bullies. But if we can get even three or four people together, they're more likely to be able to do that. And so um, if you're watching this, go to partnersforethicalcare.com and fill out a volunteer form and let us know, are you interested in protesting in front of a gender clinic? Are you interested in, you know, coordinating efforts and doing speeches at, at, you know, small venues like you were talking about, Miriam, you know, there's lots of different ways we can get the information out. And I, I'm like you, I believe that if people really knew what was going on, really understood what was happening, that they would be completely supportive of us. It's just that they're, that we're silenced. Like you said, the media won't even cover this. Um, we tried to get some, um, the Partners for Ethical Care tried to get some billboards up and the billboard companies thought that our message was too controversial. The Try message Lamer. that no child is born in the wrong body is too controversial. Lamer. Pardon? Lamer is a national country. Okay. <laughs> And we had a digital billboard and there was no, and it was beautiful. I'm going to put some pictures of it. <laughs> they worked with us to do it. So if you, if uh, Joe blows billboard company won't do it, try Lamer. Okay. All right. So, uh, they are, they stand for freedom of speech. And I have something to say, I'll go anywhere, any place, anytime and stand with any group of gender critical people who wish to speak, let them try and shut me up. <laughs> Well, and in some ways, I think, Miriam, that they've underestimated the power of older women because we don't have anything to lose, damn it. <laughs> well, that, that, that's true, but also we have a lifetime's worth of experience mm -hmm. in and we may not always be right, but I bet you we're probably more correct than wrong most of the time. Right. There, there's something to be said for the wisdom of women, especially older women, um, you know, who have lived a life and, and have, have made it through and, and now are speaking out for, for our children. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, we've learned that, that we don't have to be afraid. Mm -hmm. 
you know, yeah, we've seen it all. I mean, most of us have seen seen the dirty and seen the ugly, and you know, we 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 know what's out there. Um, and again, I don't. I I sort of have this attitude of of bring it on. I don't have anything to lose at this point. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's just I think defiance in 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 the cause of justice is a good thing. Yeah. You know, or I'm not talking about violence, but what I'm talking about is saying is standing up and saying, no, you're not going to do it anymore. Right. We've had enough and we're going to call it out for what it is. You know, yeah. it's, it's male violence. It's male bullying. Yeah, it, it is. And, and people often say, well, there are transgender people who, you know, just want to live their lives and everything else. Well, where the hell are they and why aren't they speaking up? Mm -hmm. Well, they're afraid of the bullies too. Right. Well, maybe they need to start forming a union Mm -hmm. or to stand up and say we're not happy with this and these people don't represent us yeah you know exactly. i i'm just so sick and tired of, of these these morally perverse and morally bankrupt individuals threatening and bullying and carrying on a, a, as if it is their their ordained right to do so well it isn't yeah nobody else will say so i will it is not their right to do so. Yes. Well, that's probably a good place to end, Miriam. Thank you so much for for coming on with us and and sharing your pro, you know your efforts. I'm really um, grateful for all you're doing. Well, we'll keep on, keep on, keep on because it's the only way that things get done. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud of Maria, and other people who are standing up and 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 doing what they need to do. There's there's a lot of us out there, and it's just. We need to get together and we need to stand up as the lot of us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you both.